let's begin. This is the 2023 Silicon Valley Index. I want you to know that it's made possible in part due to a grant, a generous grant from Silicon Valley Community Foundation, also from the City and County Association of Governments in San Mateo. We're grateful uh, for both of them. Um, I'd also like to meet the Director of Research at the Institute for Regional Studies. Her name is Rachel Massaro. She has presided over this project. That applause is so, in, uh, so enormously appropriate. Uh, she uh, is, the, is the head of a large team that is uh, bringing this data and information and analysis uh, to you. It includes people like Heidi Young, Ryan Young, no relationship, uh, and then uh, uh, a large number of people, uh, including uh, the ones that you see here on the screen. It wouldn't be possible without their work, and it's work that goes on uh, throughout the year. I've been elected simply to be the spokesperson, um, and uh, it's a weight of responsibility upon me, and I'll try to carry it today, but I'm speaking on their behalf. I wanted to be clear about that. Well, there is, um, there is a, there's a sense of, um, of uh, there's a sense of something out there. It's, um, it's, it's sort of like the mist settling on the bay. Silicon Valley seems to be in flux. We seem to be going through some kind of a transition. It's making people thoughtful. It's making them introspective. It's making them fearful, tense, maybe even anxious. And so today, we're actually going to be talking about that. Now, what's going on here? What's the story? Well, um, we're a valley that's uh, had uh, this prodigious economy. In fact, it's the most prodigious economy in the history of regional economies. And uh, that economy uh, was firing going into the great uh, ethnic recession. And then it was the first economy to recover from that uh, recession. Uh, we've, ever since 2010, we've been growth positive. In fact, we put together a string of nine consecutive years of growth and expansion. And it looked like this was uh, maybe one of the happiest valleys on the planet. Then the planet delivered us a blow. Uh, it turns out that there was a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic. And most people at that time thought that this might be uh, the end. It might be uh, bringing Silicon Valley, anyway, crashing down. These are reasonable people. I was among them. Uh, I thought that we were going to enter a very turbulent period in our evolutionary history. Guess what? It didn't happen. Uh, we couldn't see it at the time, but it turns out that a world that was sheltering uh, vitally needed the products and the services that Silicon Valley provided uniquely. And uh, suddenly we found our companies, our driving industries, uh, experiencing a bonanza as they delivered the platforms, the software, the tools, the delivery services, the devices, all of those things that we needed to cope with these pandemic con conditions, especially as we sheltered. And so uh, Silicon Valley, during the pandemic, went gangbusters. Uh, a lot of us, frankly, had survivor's guilt about uh, all of that. And if I could capture it all in one image, this would be it. Look at that. Our aggregate market cap uh, grew by $9 trillion during the pandemic. Stunning and amazing. That, by the way, shattered all of the records. And so. Uh, that was uh, quite an amazing and interesting story. So, why do we feel so tense? What's going on here? Well, there are some external events that uh, started to change our picture. Uh, overseas wars, inflation, high interest rates, um, uh, supply chain issues, uh, uh, inflation, uh, high, high energy costs. All of these things combined to put uh, genuine pressure on our driving industries. And there's something interesting about Silicon Valley. I'll just stipulate this. Uh, we have a whole panoply of companies, industries, and sectors. And yet, all of us living here seem to take our cues from tech. If tech is firing, we feel happy. If tech is having a moment, we feel tense. And that's what's going on right now. There's something about that. And so, uh, uh, external forces have uh, delivered a blow to some of these driving industries, and suddenly, uh, we saw this, and uh, this too is precipitous. Uh, that market cap that had grown by nine trillion, well, it fell by five, maybe six. People forget that we're still ahead. We're still ahead of where we were going into the pandemic, and yet there was this precipitous fall, and especially as it hit those FANG stocks, right? Uh, the, the Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Amazon, 
Google. So it all came tumbling down and it created this sense of unease. And so it has people, uh, yes, on edge. Now, on top of that, there are some other things happening. Layoffs, uh, some calibration, some recalibrating. Uh, we were providing the world all of these services. Tech companies made some assumptions. They thought, well, uh, we had this huge spike in demand. Uh, maybe this is our new normal. Then the pandemic started to wane, and it turns out that those demand curves uh, changed as well. And uh, as a result, our tech companies have had to make some adjustments, and it's resulted in layoffs. And at the same time that that's happening, we're experiencing other things, tremendous upheavals, frankly. Uh, things like working from home, which is a social and cultural upheaval that has economic implications. And we're still coming to terms with what some of those implications are. Um, there's an exodus out of the region, and we're trying to get a handle on what that means, and if that, if that has uh, implications for our competitive standing and stature. So all kinds of things are going on here today, and our task for you is uh, to try to make sense of it. We're not here to look in the crystal ball so much, at least that's not my role. My role is to tell you what has happened. But we are here to put it into uh, context. We're hoping today that we'll give you broad context for what's been happening, and then we're also hoping to give you a sense of historical context. For example, I'd love you to look at this chart. This encapsulates Silicon Valley's stunning history over a period of 70 years. And what I want you to understand is that we're an economy that comes in waves. And those waves uh, we call successive waves of innovation. And um, what you need to understand about each one of these waves is that they're distinct, they're unique, they all have properties uh, that are distinct to themselves. Different economies of scale, different uh, uh, prerequisites, uh, they, uh, and they've all launched a set of industries that have uh, unique characteristics. And so what's happening here is that we're, we're a region that's characterized by invention and reinvention. So that's one thing. Another thing is that we've been, a, we've been a, a region that experiences simultaneous waves. So not only the electronics and the, and the computing and the devices and how they were linked together through the internet, but also biotechnology revolutions uh, 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 and personalized medicine and, and, and the human genomics, uh, but also simultaneously with that, energy, its efficiency, grid architecture, conversions over to electrics. So this is remarkable. You won't find this anywhere else on the planet, but here's uh, one very important thing you should understand. Each one of those curves uh, represents a generation of technology and innovation. They lasted approximately eight or 10 years. That's just how it's played out over this long history. Each one lasts eight, 10, maybe 12 years. And then at the end of each one of those curves, there's been a pause, a lull, a downturn, a, a period of uncertainty, and then something else happened. And it usually happened at the boundaries of discipline uh, when a discovery was new made and then suddenly a flood of entries and suddenly this new competitive process takes over. And that has happened in our region with regularity. So this is some context that we, uh, that, that we need to have as we talk about what's happening in Silicon Valley right now. So let's talk, uh, first of all, about the jobs, the job front, because that's one of the most important indicators that we can, that we can reckon with. It says so much about us, and it also says so much about our sense of security and identity. So I would like to talk to you about the jobs, but I want to talk to you about it in the historical context. So here we were, 2008, going gangbusters like we had been for a very long time, and then we were interrupted in 2009 by external forces that were out of our control. Uh, that was an epic recession of national and international uh, proportions, pegged to real estate and pegged to some other things. Okay, then uh, we, had a, we had a couple of bad years, but then we were uh, growth positive again by uh, 2010, and then we put together this string of nine positive years. This is a growing economy. Each year was uh, more impressive than the last. Over that period of time, we added more than 850,000 new jobs to our region. Uh, that's a remarkable growth and expansion. Okay, then we have a pandemic setting in, and we've just lived this, this is recent history, but the amazing thing about this chart is that it shows you that even in the throes of a pandemic, 
we became growth positive uh, by 2021. Uh, we were adding uh, that, uh, uh, that, num uh, that amount of jobs. It was, uh, it was about 70,000 in 2021, and then guess what? The 2022 number, 88,000 jobs. Now, you're not hearing that. You're not reading that in the papers. What you're reading in the papers is other things. You're reading layoffs, and you're, and you're hearing about uh, contraction. Uh, but in actuality, these are Q2 to Q2 numbers, 88,000 new jobs added to our region, even in the throes of a pandemic. Uh, this chart stops at the end of uh, quarter two, so June, but we estimate, we have estimates that on top of this, we've added another 22,000 jobs in the latter part of the year. In other words, growth, development, economic dynamism. There's, uh, there's the total that we published in the index. This, this shows you by growth rate, same chart, but I, I just want you to see that we're growing at a rate of 5.4%. That's higher than the state average, it's higher than the national average. So there's your growth picture. This is unemployment. Uh, this shouldn't surprise you. Unemployment has come steadily down in our region. We reached this point right here where uh, we were at uh, less than 2% uh, unemployment. Economists will tell you that uh, anything less than 3% is considered full employment. That's the kind of region we are, fully employed. Here we are in the year 2022. There was a period in May, a short period of uh, time, when we were actually at 1.8% unemployment. Right now, as of this moment, we're at about mm, uh, at a, uh, hovering around 2%. So uh, that's remarkable. I want you to have a sense of how uh, our employment is composed. A lot of us think, well, they're all technology jobs. That's not actually the case. Here's your slice of technology jobs. Most of the jobs in our region are what we call community infrastructure. This is a huge category that takes in healthcare and retail and education and construction. Um, and that's where most of our jobs are. But during the period of the, uh, of, uh, of this growth that I was describing for you, uh, the slice of the tech pie got larger. And it continued to increase during the pandemic to the point where that slice had grown to 30%. And, at, uh, and we were losing the community infrastructure jobs. That's, uh, that's the real story of the pandemic. Um, tech growth, but the loss of supporting infrastructure and, uh, and the support services. That has been righted. And so now, as of 2022, that's what our pie looks like. Uh, we're, we're regaining those infrastructure jobs, and tech is also growing at the same time, but a smaller slice of the pie. Now, um, you may be interested to know this is, this is uh, uh, a significant development for the Valley. Uh, we're becoming highly concentrated. Silicon Valley used to be a place uh, employing thousands and thousands of people, but they were spread across a lot of enterprises. Now, today, Silicon Valley is uh, exhibiting uh, concentration. In fact, uh, about, um, about half of the workforce is at the largest 30 tech firms. Half of the tech workforce, I mean. Half are at 30 firms. Um, and then uh, it, it, it looks like 20% are at six firms, just 20% right off the bat. And, uh, and three firms uh, are, are, let's see, eight, yeah, three, uh, I'm sorry, three firms account for 20% of tech employment. In other words, highly concentrated. That's a new look for us. That's been a development of uh, really just the last uh, five, eight years. Um, we have the most productive uh, workforce uh, in the nation. This is a chart that just shows you uh, all of the output. So these green bars are measuring uh, productivity. They're, they're measuring all of the output, that's, all of the value that's created by uh, 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 the entire workforce, and then it's divided by the number of people in the workforce, and look at that. Uh, the, uh, the average uh, productivity is uh, around $300,000 which is a figure that's far above the average wage in Silicon Valley. So this is a highly productive region. We should understand that as part of our context. Okay, but you're saying to me, layoffs, layoffs are happening. The Valley's in crisis. This, uh, what are we to make of this? So we would like to put that for you into context. Um, of course, being laid off is a very uh, significant uh, life event. We understand that. Uh, it, it represents pain, loss, upheaval, displacement. And those transitions are happening throughout our valley. They are uh, 
uh, they are located within the tech sector itself, and I want to give you a sense of that. So that's the actual number, 11,000. That's how many people have been laid off. The layoffs started happening around August of this year. And through January, 2020, uh, January 2023, uh, we have totaled up about 11,000 layoffs, and these are across uh, these firms. Uh, so your blue chip uh, tech companies, uh, uh, there's your roster, uh, and it comes to about 11,000. We need to put that number, that's a big number. Uh, it's a number of concern, no question about that. However, we need to put that number into uh, perspective. So here's the perspective on it. The, uh, that's, what it that's what it amounts to as a percentage of our total workforce. So we're only talking about uh, uh, less than 1% of our total workforce. Uh, and then for the tech workforce, uh, we're actually only talking about 2%, 2% or less. That's what's happened so far. Now, uh, we have warn notices filed with the Employee Devel Development Department, and it looks like we're headed for another 9,000 or 10,000 more. That's where we seem to be headed. But again, we, uh, we're here today to put things in context. That would be, um, uh, that, that, will, that will bring us to about 20,000 layoffs. That will still be a fractional percentage of total workforce, even a fractional percentage of the tech workforce. Uh, I'd like to remind people that we've seen downturns in Silicon Valley. Remember that chart. Downturns are just, uh, that's a standard feature of our DNA. It happens with regularity. Uh, this is nothing like the downturns that we've experienced in the past. The dot-com bust, that generated 300,000 uh, uh, job eliminations, 300,000. So uh, again, context, this isn't anything approaching uh, that. In fact, during this time, this will give you more context. Here we are in the period since uh, 2010, we've grown at a rate of 30% um, since the pandemic set in. Look at this, we're still growth positive. We've been growing at about uh, 2% throughout the, through, through the pandemic. And those were tech jobs that were leading the growth. Uh, and here we are, uh, just uh, the, the past year over year, and that's a 5.4 growth rate. So that's the context that we have to uh, have on this. Now, uh, it's not complete to just talk about tech. Of course, we're an economy that's bigger than tech, so I want to give you a sense of that. So we told you that there's this big slice of the pie, and those are community infrastructure jobs. Those are very important jobs. And as of 2022, we've lost about, we're down. We're down 3%. We, uh, we need to be recovering those jobs. So uh, that's what we're doing. Now, certain segments of those jobs are in fact growing. And so there's good news here. For example, healthcare, social services, warehousing. Warehousing is, uh, is, uh, is big news for our region. It's become uh, a really vital um, uh, component of tech delivery, uh, those types of things. Uh, banking and financial services is growing. We're losing, here's where we're losing, take note of this. We're losing in food services, accommodation industries, retail, we're not recapturing those jobs. Transportation jobs, we'll show you charts later about uh, our public transit systems. This is personal services, uh, here's construction. Uh, here is arts and entertainment. So uh, this sector has a long way to go and that becomes uh, a, a, you know, a priority for our region to help this uh, sector recover. Nonprofits, my own sector, is also experiencing the pain still associated with the pandemic. But here we are with tech jobs and they're, uh, they're growing. Uh, uh, tech alone is growing at, a, at an 8% rate and, uh, and then there's other manufacturing. Okay, so um, we talked about layoffs. Then you say to me, well, uh, what about the exodus? There is this mass departure of people from our region, and is that going to upend Silicon Valley as we know it, and will it have competitive implications? Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about that systematically and carefully. That, my friends, is the total number of departures from our region. Yes, there's an exodus. It's happening. It's, uh, it's, it's really happening. Um, that's over a two-year period. So the past two years, uh, round up if you want, 100,000 people, uh, close to 100,000 people have departed from our region for other places. Yes, that's a significant exodus, but let's talk about it. Let's also put that in context. This chart is showing you the components of population change. And here's what Silicon Valley has looked like over a 23 year period. Uh, when um, our population has been declining, 
Uh, and and the, the orange bars are just tracing our population, just tracking the progress. Uh, and, and the way you do that is you take all of the number of births and you subtract the number of deaths, and that's your, that's your growth rate. So Silicon Valley is declining because we have lower birth rates than we have had historically, and we have higher death rates. We're actually an aging population. Um, that segment of our community is growing as a percentage. And so deaths up, births down, and yes, Silicon Valley has been uh, declining in population. Then you add migration into the picture. So for the migration, you add all of the people that are coming into the region, you subtract the people who are leaving, and this tells you that ever since 2016, uh, people have not been coming into the region. They have not been immigrating from other places into the region. Uh, by sheer coincidence, that corresponds with uh, the election of our former president and the culture and the tone and the policy levers that were then put in place with respect to immigration. Uh, we see a correspondence. I'll just remind you that uh, Silicon Valley was not actually built by um, locals. Silicon Valley was built by people coming from other places, the best and the brightest, from other continents, from throughout the world, and that's how this place was constructed and, and it's, it is how we continue to roll. And those trends changed in a dramatic way starting in 2016. So there's your picture. Now you add to that uh, the departures. This, by the way, was a poll that we took uh, in the fall and 56% of our respondents told us that they are making, um, uh, they are considering leaving the region. So this, uh, this continues. And they cite, uh, you know, they cite various factors, but the most frequently cited is the cost of housing in Silicon Valley. Okay, so now your question is, all right, if 91,000 people left the region, where did they go? Um, the assumption is that they're going to uh, Austin, they're going to Miami, they're going to Denver. That's what you're hearing, right? You're, you're reading that in the papers. Uh, in actuality, here is what we have learned. Uh, most of those departures are not leaving the Bay Area. Uh, we've learned that, um, uh, that about 28% uh, of the departures are staying right here in the Bay Area, but they're moving to the perimeter because that's where there's more affordable housing. And then we have learned that uh, after that, there's another 20 something percent that are staying in Northern California. Uh, they're going to what I call greater Silicon Valley, the adjacent regions, Sacramento, San Joaquin Valley, uh, Monterey. And so uh, uh, close to half of the departures are still within driving distance. That's one thing that we should understand. Okay, then the rest are going to these places. And, uh, and, and here's, um, here's how they stack up uh, by intensity. So uh, the most common uh, destination has been Seattle, followed by Texas, followed by New York, Dallas, Portland, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Denver. That's where uh, people seem to be headed. Now, let me make a point if you don't understand this already. These people have left the region. Um, significant percentages are still Silicon Valley employees. They've kept their job, they just are doing it, they're filling it remotely. So, when you see this, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a departure of jobs, it's a departure of people, but Silicon Valley has retained its job base. In fact, it has grown its job base during this exodus. And so what we see, one way to think about this is that Silicon Valley is actually turning into a, um, uh, a part of a network. It's a major node of innovation and entrepreneurship in a network of nodes that's being distributed across the country and it's all tied together through the communications tools that we invented. And in fact, that's also happening on a world scale. That's one way that we could think about the exodus and uh, we'll leave it to you and our discussions to ponder another way. Now, uh, I need some help. I'm looking at my countdown clock, but it's going up, not down. I need to know. <laughs> I need to know what time it is and what time, how much time do I have left? What time is it? What time am I supposed to stop? Oh, I have one minute? Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to uh, make some game time adjustments. I'm going to go for five minutes, okay? 
I'll get us through five minutes of material and then we'll bring our panel onto the stage. We'll take a break. We might shave just a little time from that break and, uh, and, and we'll, uh, we'll figure out how to keep you on time and that's a promise. Okay, and if somebody would give me a five minute, or if somebody would give me a two minute warning, that would be really helpful. Thank you, Ashley, I appreciate that. Okay, now, um, this is a very important question. We've talked about how Silicon Valley's losing people. Another question, important question is, is Silicon Valley losing companies? Um, as of today, we've lost four companies. That's not a big number. That's a small number. So again, context, we're trying to create context. Those are the companies, by the way, that departed. Three of them went to Texas, one went to Denver. Uh, I have to tell you, honestly, uh, most of these departures are pretty, um, pretty much associated with the, with the, with the CEO. Um, uh, just, you know, personal, uh, personal peaks and, uh, and uh, personality traits of the CEO. And so, yes, four companies have departed, but those companies, have left their workforce here in Silicon Valley. The headquarters left, and yet they've actually expanded their footprint here in Silicon Valley. That's interesting. Um, and so here is, uh, here's what's actually happening with Silicon Valley companies. Uh, I'll just tell you this really quickly. Uh, Silicon Valley companies have continued to grow throughout this period of pandemic, exodus, layoffs. We've still been growth positive, but you should also understand that Silicon Valley companies are growing outside the region and they're growing at a higher rate outside the region. Uh, our tech companies are adding more people outside of Silicon Valley uh, than they are here at a rate of 33%. And they're, they're adding to their global workforce at a rate of 66%. So all of that is happening simultaneously. I'll skip this chart in the interest of time. We're going to talk about remote work because that's a really important uh, question that we need to be pondering today. Um, what does it mean? What does remote work mean for the region? Well. Uh, I'd just like you to know that remote work is here and is here to stay. Silicon Valley loves working in their pajamas. We just, uh, we love that. Uh, and, and, and we're not going back. That has become perfectly clear. Uh, before the pandemic, 5% of us were doing that. In the first year, 28%. In the second year, when we were supposed to be trickling back to the office, we didn't. Our percentage grew. 35% are doing it. And then it turns out the higher your income, the more likely you are. So if you're making more than 150,000, uh, 60% are working from home. So that's, uh, that's really significant. Uh, this, for example, shows you uh, the percentages that have gone back to the office, right? Only 34% of, uh, of our uh, working population has gone back to the office. It, Austin, uh, by contrast, 60% are all back in the office. That's what's going on there. And, it's decimating our downtowns. So this is a chart that shows you that of all of these major metropolitan regions, San Jose, Oakland, San Francisco are at the bottom in terms of downtown activity. Look, this is, this is um, California and Battery in San Francisco. I used to work on that corner. That is high noon in San Francisco. Those streets are empty. And so that has huge implications, not for the tech workforce, but for that supporting ancillary uh, uh, infrastructure that supports tech and the jobs that were uh, requiring that. So that's something for our region to sort out. But it has other effects. It's clearing up our roadways. That's significant. Uh, it, it contributes to the sustainability of our region, but it is decimating transit. So let me just blow through this. Uh, Caltrain ridership. We were at 67,000 daily riders. That was full capacity for Caltrain. That was all they could possibly carry. And then the pandemic happens, guess what? 44,000 daily riders today, that's it. Now, they've been propped up by infusions of federal funds. Uh, that has now come to a close, and so we're about to learn if Silicon Valley is going to be bankrupt. Yeah, I got your, I got your cue. Okay. Um, um, I'm, I'm going to buy two more minutes. Here's, here's a key question. Has anything happened to the in innovation engine? Are we still firing there? Um, here's venture capital. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss and debate this, but we had an amazing year, $95 billion, unbelievable, record-breaking. Okay, in 2022, we came down to half of that. Uh, it was about uh, 45, 48, call it $50 billion. Now, I just want you to, again, today is all about context and perspective. If you took this bar out, this would be the highest bar in our history. And yet for some reason we're feeling like there's a problem here. And that's something that we should be talking about today. 
Um, where's it going? To really new and exciting companies in new fields. It's not going to internet companies. It's going to biotechnology. It's going to uh, sustainability companies that are reinventing farming and agriculture. It's going to companies that are building residential construction and using new materials to do that. So this is an exciting uh, picture for us. Um, uh, you should know that we have the highest um, collection of decacorns and unicorns in the world. That continues to be the case. Uh, this is the number of newly funded startups. Again, record breaking off the charts. Uh, and so it seems like our, in, in, uh, our innovation engine is, is firing. Here's patent registrations, 20,000 in this past calendar year, one of the highest numbers ever recorded. And so if you're wondering uh, if Silicon Valley is still being innovative, if we're still being entrepreneurial, where all the signs are still there, despite these things that are making us tense and uneasy, the innovation economy is still firing. Okay, so I'll just wrap with this. Uh, I, I want to set the stage for the panel that is going to join us in, uh, in one minute. The question is, what does all this mean, right? If we were to look in the crystal ball, what, what should we think? Well, <laughs> there are the alarmists who are saying, oh my gosh, layoffs, exodus, venture capital is plunging, tech's in the doldrums. That's one uh, valid interpretation, it really is. But there's another interpretation that's uh, equally plausible, which is to say, well, layoffs have to be understood as a small percentage. Exodus might be opening us up to a world of opportunities. Uh, now Silicon Valley will be networked, and now all of the innovation will be dispersed across a network of nodes. Venture capital, well, not necessarily, if you understand it in context. Tech, we now know that uh, you know, these things happen with regularity, and maybe we just, I mean, cycles are cycles. That's why they call them cycles. Okay, this is the last thing I'll say. Um, because we're a cycling economy, people have enjoyed writing our obituary. Um, and there's something about it, a sense of schadenfreude about this. Uh, so here's, uh, these are really reputable publications, and there they are writing our obituary. And um, I just want you to know that that was Business Week in 1985. <laughs> That was the Times in 91. This is Wired in 2001. The Economist is my favorite publication. It's 2019, and this was Bloomberg just this year. So we'll leave it to you to figure out where you think we're headed.